Metamaterial is an artificial material um, that we make with a bottom-up approach. A metamaterial we can make by taking a piece of metal and winding it into a shape that looks like a C pattern. That metamaterial will respond in a certain way to light. And based on how many windings we make and the size of that C resonator, um, we will get a prescribed response to electric and magnetic fields. So some of my research is focused in the terahertz range of the electromagnetic spectrum. The terahertz regime is a range that falls in between the microwave regime and the infrared regime. We're used to microwave from our microwave ovens and perhaps we know the thermal infrared regime because we can see heat with thermal infrared cameras. The terahertz range falls within between those two ranges of the spectrum. The terahertz range has a number of unique features that people are interested in such as it has the ability to penetrate dry clothing. And so for example, we're interested in doing personnel screening at airports in the terahertz range. It can work uh, from a standoff distance. You can image someone, see if they are hiding something on their person, and also determine what it is that they are hiding. Terahertz is a good band of the spectrum uh, to do communications in. We can get a much greater bandwidth uh, at terahertz frequencies than we can at microwave frequencies. Where that could be used is in inter-satellite communication where we don't have water because we don't have any air. And water is a strong absorber of terahertz radiation. With metamaterials, we can design these um, to have an absorption of a certain band of the electromagnetic spectrum. So we've been using metamaterials that are absorbers for a, a couple of different devices. One is to control the radiation emitted from surfaces for energy harvesting applications. The other is to use a metamaterial as a detector of radiation so that when radiation comes in, we can design the metamaterial such that every photon that comes to the surface is not transmitted, not reflected, but completely absorbed within the metamaterial and converted to heat. We can then pair that with a thermal infrared camera to see where it heats up, and therefore we can get that image with a thermal infrared camera. Conventional metamaterials are using metals. And as such, we've been able to do many great things with metamaterials. Uh, however, they have certain disadvantages uh, being based on metals. One is that you cannot get them very hot. Metals melt if you get to a 1,000 degrees uh, Celsius. So what we've been working on quite a bit is to make metamaterials and to have some of these same functionalities and properties of metamaterials, but to use only dielectrics. We have an idea of using these all dielectric metamaterial absorbers for solar steam generation. The way that would work is we can scale these down, just like conventional metamaterials, such that they're strong absorbers of radiation in the visible range. You could take that, dump that into a bucket of water, and when you shine visible light on it, it would create a, an immense amount of heat, which would lead to steam generation. So you purify your water, and then you could simply scoop these up at the end to recycle for the next batch. Over the last couple of decades, we've seen metamaterials come to fruition by academic scientists. In the next couple of decades, I believe that the commercial sector will take over and there will be an enormous number of metamaterial applications.